Hello and welcome to A-Level Biology with Miss Estrick. This video is going through the dissection required practical for A-Level Biology. If you are new here then just click subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. So this required practical is AQA's version but there are similar ones across all the exam boards for A-Level. So it's the dissection of either an animal or plant gas exchange or mass transport organ. So I'm going to go through this looking at a sheep's heart but you may have been given lungs or a fish head or even parts of a plant but the ideas behind the apparatus and techniques will be applicable to all of them so the skills that it's testing is can you safely use instruments that you need to use for a dissection so that will be a scalpel and the dissecting needle in particular can you produce scientific drawings of what you are observing and finally, can you safely use the animal material or it could be plant material to examine their physiological functions? So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. So the aim for the heart dissection is to be able to identify the main blood vessels that you learn in topic three. So looking at the vena cava, the pulmonary arteries, the pulmonary veins and the aorta. Can you identify the valves within the heart? And sometimes this isn't possible because sometimes when you do get hearts from the butchers to be dissected, they've been slashed open and actually cut through the valves. Can you identify the left and the right side of the heart? And finally, the four chambers. Now you may be given slightly different aims by your school, but I'm gonna focus on these ones for now. So you'd need to know what equipment to use. So here's some standard examples of equipment that you would need for a dissection. Now I said I'm using a sheep's heart example, but it'd be whatever your dissection. You would then perform your dissection on the board and the tray is where you'd have all your equipment. Dissecting instruments. Now I've just done that generally, but you typically have some scissors. You might have some tweezers. Here we have a dissecting needle and a scalpel. You might be given labels and pins so you can actually pin particular structures that you've identified and then write on the label what structure it is. Plastic gloves don't have to be worn but you may choose to wear them to prevent the spread of potential infection and that's also the purpose of the beaker of disinfectant and the disinfectant spray which you'd be using to clean down the surfaces afterwards. Camera is so that you can record what you've observed and then disposal bag so you can safely dispose of any of the paper towels that have touched the heart but also the organ itself. So the method then I've split into three sections. Here's the first two. So before you do any dissecting at all you can identify some of the external structures. So you'd want to take some photos of the outside of the heart so you can identify the coronary arteries. You might be able to try this point here as well. So you can try and locate the aorta and the pulmonary artery and the semilunar valves within them. And if you were to run water through tubing in through the aorta and the pulmonary artery, it will actually cause the semilunar valves to close because you're now creating a higher pressure um, behind that semilunar valve compared to where the ventricles are. Now to open those, you would then squeeze the heart gently and that will then create a more pressure in the ventricle compared to the arteries and that will then open the valves and the water will come back out. So you may or may not have the opportunity to try that. So then you get onto the dissection itself. So first of all you'd make a cut along the side of the heart so you can then look into it and identify the four chambers. So the left and the right atria at the top and the left and right ventricles at the bottom. Once you've done that, you should be able to identify the atrioventricular valves, which are the valves that are found between the atria and the ventricles. And there are these long, thin, white tenderness cords attached to them. So one thing you could try and take a photo of, as well as just feel, is use the dissection needle to slightly pull up on those cords and you'll be able to feel just how strong those tenderness cords are. You should also be able to, by lifting up the tenderness cord, be able to see the valves and you can actually see through them, they're that thin. So it's worthwhile having a look at how thin they are and if you can, document that in a photo so you can annotate that in your write-up. 
Next, examine the thickness of the muscular walls of the different chambers. And the key things I'd be noting down are looking at the thickness of the left ventricle muscular wall in comparison to the right and annotate any photos you take to explain why you have a thicker ventricle on the left side. And also comparing the thickness of the walls of the atria compared to the ventricles and again annotating why. Now if you do want to know the reasons why I'll link up here my video on heart structure and function and then you can find out all of those details there. So lastly you may be given dissection pins and labels so you can actually put pins into each four of the chambers and then add a label you might be able to do the same thing with the valves and so on. Now if you don't have that take photos and then add label lines afterwards so you can label the structures in that way. So the final part of the method is how to safely pack away and this is key because one of the things you'll be assessed on is the safe use of equipment but also animal product while you're doing a dissection. So all equipment, dissecting equipment that is, needs to be placed in disinfectant and that's just in case there are any potential pathogens on the organ you've been dissecting that will then kill the pathogens. You should place the heart, the gloves you may have worn and any paper towel that came in contact with the heart into disposal bags, which won't then just go into the classroom bin. They'll be disposed of safely and removed that day. And you also need to clean down your work surface with different disinfectant. Again, just to make sure that if there are any bacteria that may have been on the heart that is harmful, you're removing it. So that's the method. Then you need to consider the risk assessment. And again, always think about what's the hazard risk prevention. And I've picked out two key hazards to discuss here. The first one is if you are dissecting an animal product, the risk is you might end up contracting bacteria or spreading it to other people. And there's a whole range of preventions that need to be put in place to make sure that you aren't going to contaminate the lab or yourself with bacteria. So for example, wearing a lab coat, if you are wearing gloves, safely dispose of them. Same with the paper towels. If you have any cuts on your hands, you must have plasters on those and I'd suggest wearing gloves as well. Whether you wore gloves or not, you should be washing your hands with a bactericide or hand wash afterwards. All of the instruments should be washed thoroughly with detergent and then disinfectant. The heart, as we said, needs to be wrapped up, placed into a separate bin bag and disposed of that day. And if it's not been disposed of that day, it needs to be wrapped up in the storage bags and then it's placed in the freezer until it's disposed of. And all equipment should be disinfected. Now the second hazard is the dissection equipment, which are very sharp. The scalpel, scissors if you're using them, and the dissection needle. So the risk is you could cut yourself. Now to prevent that, you just need to make sure you are handling all of the equipment very, very carefully and sensibly. So that would cover your risk assessment. So finally, it's how you'd present your results. And this links to, again, one of the key skills that they were stating that they're gonna assess you on and that is scientific drawings. Now you can, and I would recommend that you take photographs as well, so that you can then draw label lines and label all the different structures from your photo, and then you can do a scientific drawing either from your photo, or it could be from the actual heart that you're observing. It just depends how much time you have in your practical to be able to do this. Now, if you don't quite remember the scientific drawings, what should be included and what shouldn't be, I have got a video which I'll link up here and you can have a look back at how to draw scientifically or biological drawings. But I've just listed below some of the key points. So you have to have a title. So for example, here, I would say heart dissection. There must be a scale. So if you're going to be drawing it exactly the same size as the heart, you'd say to scale. If you've drawn it half the size that the actual half was, then you'd indicate that. It should be drawn with a very sharp pencil, no colouring in or shading. The whole purpose is just to show proportion 
and size. And in the case of the heart, it would be that you're act accurately drawing where the structures are. So that you're being able to indicate, for example, the thickness of the ventricle walls, these tenderness cords attached to the atrioventricular valves. We've got the atria up here, the septum, and so on. And that's the final point. You need to make sure that you are labeling structures but any label lines that you do have mustn't overlap or obscure any key parts of your drawing. And for this particular practical, I would suggest that you annotate the functions or explanations as to why there's differences. So for example, here we can see a really, really thick muscular wall. In your annotation, you'd be stating what the structure is. So the left ventricle muscular wall, and then you'd be explaining why that muscular wall is so much thicker than the right ventricle muscular wall. So that is it for the dissection required practical. Hope you found it helpful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up.